Welcome back to Copper Star Precision, the channel dedicated to getting you more points at your competitive shooting matches. Some keen-eyed viewers of mine who are subscribed to this channel have noticed that I've been using a new rifle in some of my videos, and here it is. And if you're new here and you're looking for tips and tricks on how to score more points at your competitive shooting matches, mostly focusing on the NRL 22 for now, you're in the right place. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. So, what is this? This is what started life as a CZ457 Varmint MTR. The MTR comes with this nice walnut stock, comes with the match chamber, 20 inch barrel, pretty much ready for competition out of the box. In fact, another YouTube channel that you're probably familiar with, Josh from The Pursuit of Accuracy, heralds the MTR as basically the best out of the box rifle you can buy in 2022 and 2023. I shoot a ton of very accurate 22 long rifles and I've also shot everything from ultra cheap up to ultra expensive and having that experience I think I can safely say I know what the best dollar for dollar rimfire is that you can currently buy and that's going to be available in 2023 without a shadow of a doubt it is the CZ 457 MTR. However, in other videos, he does mention that his winning combination is the CZ Varmint MTR with a Lilja barrel. Notice how he changed out the barrel. So before we get into the shooting, I want to quickly say this is a completely stock factory CZ 457 MTR with the exception of one thing, and that is the Lilja barrel. This is a recipe that I've used time and time again across the last couple of years to get the best repeatable accuracy for your money in rimfire, period. The X-Ring also made a recent video about the MTR, talking about how it's great for production class if you have PRS rimfire matches near you. But an interesting point is that he mentions Kenny from Desert Precision Gunworks, how he says there's a cold bore shift on some of these rifles. You know, talking to Kenny over at Desert Precision Gunworks, you guys know that he builds most of my precision rifles. He did say that the CZ MTRs are extremely promising, but he did say there is definitely a cold bore shift um, when shooting it. And the question naturally arises, why would you change so many things on a rifle if it's so good out of the box? And the reason is those cold bore shifts, those first round impacts, were not going where I wanted them to go, flyers all over the place, just for the first round. Every other round would hammer point of aim, point of impact. Just that first round was giving me terrible, terrible problems. Now I tried the easy solutions first. I tried deep cleaning the gun. I tried, you know, changing my tuner settings. I tried taking the tuner off. Nothing seemed to help that first round cold bore shift. Let me roll in some match footage here to give you a better idea of what I was experiencing and what I'm talking about. Spinners going at the same time, but I was able to pull out a perfect score, engaging both with five rounds and making them both spin. It helped that we had unlimited rounds to do it. Uh, so lots of mag changes, a lot of fun overall. So that might have been a little difficult to witness in real time. So let's break it down frame by frame. This first frame is exactly where my point of aim was right before the shot broke. This next frame is where you can see the splash off to the left of where the impact actually hit. So the bullet is sailing way off to the left on that first cold bore shift shot. If we look at these shots side by side, essentially that little X is exactly where the round hit. Now elevation is a little different because since the bullet passed the target, it's actually going further and dropping more. So I'm not too concerned about that. What is extremely concerning is that the first shot is probably between 1.2 and 1.4 mils to the left. Now that is an extreme shift. Now as you can tell, this target is extremely large. It's about two mils wide. So missing by that much of a margin on such a large target is really unacceptable. I will say that something else I did try was trying to make a separate profile that kind of accounted for that first round shift because it usually was off to the left but it wasn't really consistent enough for me to make a judgment call, so that was out of the question. Now this next frame is essentially the second round that I shot. Here you can see my point of aim. Now notice how I didn't make a correction off of that first shot. Normally if you have something that's so drastic, you might think it's the wind, but knowing what I know, it was definitely the cold bore shift. So with no correction, I aim the second shot pretty much dead center. And then this next frame is the frame right before the bullet impact. And I have a little red arrow here to signify where you should be looking so you can see where the round actually impacts. The literal next frame shows where the bullet impact is. It might be a little bit hard to see, but that's exactly where the bullet impacted. So there wasn't a bullet mark there before, and now there is. 
So looking at the second shot side by side, you can see virtually exactly where I was aiming is exactly where the bullet went, which was so frustrating because the rifle would shoot lights out except for that first round. I mean, everything else was on target. Any mistakes or misses of targets was definitely on me. It wasn't on the rifle. The rifle was very, very accurate after that first round. So you can imagine my frustration when it came to this rifle. Everything else that I shot out of it after the first round was great. Uh, any misses were definitely on my ability or my ability to read wind. It was not the rifle's fault. But when you're in a competitive setting, that first round, if you're missing one round of stage, you're not going to be in the top 10. Um, you're, there's going to be other mistakes along the way, and you really can't afford to simply lose one impact per stage. It just wasn't going to be competitive. Now, I've set the personal goal of trying to win a match this year, so that rifle essentially wasn't going to cut it. Could I have gone for a custom build? Yes, I could have gone for a Voodoo or a Rimex or any of those rifles. I know they have new magazines out, but I've heard horror stories of magazine feed issues, which is also a problem. I really like the CZ platform, wanted to stay with it. Has a nice smooth action, completely reliable with all the magazines I've thrown at it. And all, all in all, it's a great platform. It was just missing some of that key component. Now, not to say that the MTR is a bad rifle at all. I just don't think it, for my use case and exactly what I wanted to get out of it, it was going to do the trick. It would have been a perfect candidate for something like the American Rimfire Association where you have cider targets so you can eliminate that cold bore shift by taking a few ciders and then go to run your target for score. But for the goals that I'm trying to achieve in the sport of NRL 22, I wanted to up the game. So the changes made, actually the really only thing here is the action and the bolt, the scope rail, the rings and the scope. Everything else is pretty much new. We have a new barrel chambered by Kenny, and then we also have this new chassis. I actually really did like the ergonomics of the old chassis. Um, it was pretty well balanced, had a nice feel, but the issue is that this barrel is too thick to fit in this barrel channel, and I didn't want to go and hog out a bunch of material. One, because I could probably build another rifle on this platform and have great success at something like a bench rest competition or another NRL 22 gun. Uh, just with not using the MTR chamber in the barrel, just using a regular CZ457 chambered um, barrel. But the idea is if I were ever to sell this and I hogged out a bunch of material, I'd probably lose a lot of value. So whether I keep this or I sell it, I wanted to keep it in its original configuration. Also, this chassis is probably not well known to most of you. This is a PDC custom chassis. Of course, there are the Masterpiece Arms chassis, there are the MDT chassis, there's a plethora of chassis available for the CZ457 all of which have advantages and disadvantages and are all at different price points. Here I wanted to go with something a little bit unique, a little bit different, so I could bring that experience to you, the viewers. As you can see, I kind of have it themed after the Arizona flag here with the blue, the red, and the yellow. And there's no copper in here yet, but this Vortex Strike Eagle, although it's a wonderful scope, um, I think this build needs some copper, so I might have to go with the new Gen 3 Razor in that kind of uh, burnt copper color. I think that would just complete the look of the build and it's an amazing scope So if anybody from vortex wants to help me out Reach out because uh, that's that scope is not cheap. So this has kind of been an overview video of this build We're gonna be going more in depth. There'll be future videos. We're gonna talk about sort of the barrel we're gonna talk about the Kind of changes to internal plastic parts that you can make that I've done to this rifle just to get it even more resilient and reliable for all the torture testing we put it through at matches and then we'll do a separate video on the chassis, all the configurations you can order, all the different features. I pretty much have this completely kitted out, except it does not have the folding stock option, which in hindsight I probably should have gotten. It would have made cleaning a lot easier. But I basically have every other option on this rifle. The barricade stop, the thumb rest, the adjustable um, rear, and the weight kit. So we'll go over all of that in much more detail in future videos. So I hope you stick around. It's going to be a fruitful video series. You're definitely going to see this at matches going forward when I compete in the open class. I haven't forgot about the Ruger Rim Fire. It's just been on the back burner since I got this, and this is so accurate. It, it really is a pleasure to shoot, but we're definitely going to do more Ruger videos coming up. If you're not subscribed, don't forget to subscribe because with notifications because there's a lot more content coming out soon. And not only that, but I got my hands on some Lapua long range and super long range that I've been testing through this rifle and the initial results are extremely promising. So I'm filming footage for that. We'll have reviews of those and we'll basically just go through the whole build. I hope you enjoy this content in today's day and age with YouTube being the way it is with Second Amendment channels. Um, it's more important ever to show your support, not just to me, 
I'm a small channel, show to support to any Second Amendment channel that brings you content that you enjoy. And the best way to do that is to like this video, comment, share it with others. You know, let's show the algorithms who's boss that you want to see more content like this. And I really appreciate all the support, especially anyone from Vortex. Hint, hint, if uh, they want to help me out. <laughs> but that being said, I hope you enjoyed. There's a lot more videos to come about this. And until I see you next time, as always, score more points.